Christian Bale was doing in American Psycho. This video is going to be about reenactment of some of the people in the news. To paraphrase Nina, the character from The Seagull by Anton Chekhov, doing a horrible job acting. Cold, 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 horror, horror, horror. I feel that's such a great phrase for what's happening in the world. It's not really that cold outside, but the horror part of it is right on. I'm referring to Prince Harry, the new bit that came out saying that his older brother, Prince William, was physical towards him. When he had a meeting being told his wife, Megan, the B-list celebrity, was obnoxious, abrasive. What he says happened is Prince William grabbed him by the collar, threw him back, fell, ripped scratches on his back. Another thing he said was that he was encouraged by Prince William and Princess Catherine. When he came to making a decision about what costume to wear for a Halloween, he needed the opinion of his brother and sister-in-law on what to wear. He was not able to think clearly and make a decision on his own. He has to put on the responsibility on everybody else. They suggested he wears a Nazi jacket. He's not responsible for that. <gasps> Hello, everyone. What is happening in this world? Talk about reenactment. You know, when I was about to do this video and I was going to talk about Prince Spare Me book and the bits that are coming out in the two interviews, the one that he's doing with Anderson Cooper, which from the trailer of it, the way that Anderson Cooper is reacting to him doesn't seem to me he is going to be the journalist that's going to challenge Prince Harry. I feel like he is going to be another Oprah, to be honest. And I would feel really bad for Anderson Cooper because I think he's a great journalist. But I do feel from his reactions he has in the very small trailers that we were able to see, he's kind of looking as if to move on the story of what Prince Harry is saying, but without coming back with questions and details about the whole situation. So I feel that he's going to let him get away again with everything that he's saying and not asking for any kind of proof about it. The other journalist he's doing the interview with in uh, Britain is the same guy that was doing the interview with Megan years ago when the whole saga began, when she was talking to him and he was asking her. He looked at Megan. He said to Megan, how are you feeling? Duchess of Sussex, how are you doing? She was so surprised. She couldn't believe that somebody was actually asking her how she's doing. She's been having such a horrible time during the whole couple of months. She was a working royal and nobody has ever, ever thought to ask her how she is. So now... Prince Harry is going back to the same journalist who is again on their side. And we're going to get the one-sided story we have been getting for how many years now without any kind of dialogue that is going to challenge them. When is somebody going to have that courage to stand up and to say what you are saying doesn't make sense? When is that going to happen? Can somebody tell me? Can somebody please, please, please tell me? I cannot wait to see the two interviews, to be honest. I cannot wait to see them because I want to be proven wrong. I want to be able to come next week and say, I have to apologize for everything that I've said about these two journalists. Look at how brave they were in doing their jobs as they should be doing their jobs to ask for details in the story that Prince Harry is now telling before his book is coming out. You know what's so crazy in acting? And I think I have to correct myself because in one of the videos, in some of my videos, actually, I was given the credit to 
the actor studio coming up with the phrase for the craft of acting to be the art of experiencing. I think it's so because I didn't want to go back to talk about the father of acting, the Russian father of acting, Konstantin Stanislavsky, with the war in Ukraine. I was trying to be careful in mentioning a Russian. Then I thought about it more and I decided that just because the crazy Vladimir Putin is doing what he's doing right now, acting as the madman in this horrible war in Ukraine, people before him, such people as Konstantin Stanislavsky, who is the constructor of the first written manual for actors, which happened between, I believe, 1880s and 1920s, during his entire career and especially that period in his life, trying to come up with exercises and techniques for actors to how they can act truthfully in the imaginary situation. So he was the one that came up with acting should be experiencing. The craft of acting became known as the art of experiencing he having seen so many amazing actors and at the same time having seen so many bad actors he was doing research and he was trying to be an observer to figure out what was the difference between the actors that were able to give great performances truthful performances believable performances and what were the bad actors doing the ones who could not achieve the same goals. So many years he was observing, he was also working, observing himself because he was not only the father of acting, he was also a director and he was also an actor himself. Self-awareness by self-reflecting to why sometimes his performances were extraordinary and he felt like he was believable and he was living moment to moment to moment in those experiences in the different characters that he was portraying those moments were working and then the other experiences when the same thing he thought he was doing they were not working therefore he was able to come up with a manual with a written format for all the actors out there to be able to go to when inspiration was not sufficient to make them have great performances. Based on his teachings, based on his manual, people such as Lee Strasberg, who was the artistic director of the actor studio, took those teachings and those ideas and he adapted them to the American actor in the United States of America. What's so interesting about this whole thing is that in about 1920s, I'm not exactly sure which the year was, Konstantin Stanislavski with Moscow Art Theater came to America with an Anton Chekhov play. That's why the beginning of this video was a phrase from one of Anton Chekhov's plays of Nina as the character. They brought one of the plays by Anton Chekhov to Broadway. It's being said that when the show was over, the audience members who were privileged to be in the theater, having seen for the first time actors such as Konstantin Stanislavski and the rest of the troupe from the Moscow Art Theater, at the end of it, when the curtain went down, they didn't know what to do. They didn't know what to do because it was the first time they had seen great acting in comparison to what they had seen before, which was pretend acting. The pretend acting that I was doing in the beginning of the video, where everything before the Moscow Art Theater was about presentation. It was about putting on emotions without feeling those emotions. So when they were faced with something that was so great for the first time, at the end of it, there were minutes that went by without the audience knowing what to do. That is such a teachable moment for all of us. It tells us 
in a general situation, not only having to do with the art of acting, but in any situation, if we are being exposed to mediocre people, to mediocre behavior, when we are being faced with greatness, we need a couple of minutes for the brain to understand what great is. The same the audience is needed those few minutes. Then they started to applaud. But then after that, they were able to realize they had seen something that was so believable on the stage. They had seen characters who were behaving like human beings. They turned their back to the audience for the first time when they were talking to each other. They were not worried about presenting what they were saying to the audience. They used the stage as a full four wall room by turning their back to the audience. At first, when it was received by the audience, they were like, why are they turning their backs to us? We are supposed to be the audience. They have to be facing us. Then they realized those actors were no longer actors. They were the characters. They were the people in the play. Because if you think about it, majority of characters, unless specified, are people. Majority of the characters in fictional stories or in real stories, they're human beings. They're not actors. So why portray them as actors? They used to be portrayed before the Moscow Art Theater came to the United States, where everything was presentational. Now everything was being lived in the moment by those characters on that stage. So then by the end of it, when the audience realized they have been witnesses to something they have never seen before, it made them realize that everything those characters were doing made them feel something because they themselves were feeling every emotion in every moment. They started to applaud and applaud and applaud and applaud and applaud and applaud and applaud. And applaud. So the art of experiencing as what the craft of acting is goes back to Konstantin Stanislavski in Russia about 100 years ago. I mean, I knew this all along, but then I kind of wanted to leave that chapter to the side because I wanted to focus only on the actor studio and the founding of the actor studio and all of that. So it's not that I was really wrong about it because they did, Lee Strasberg, Gilia Kazan, and all the people associated with the actor studio, like I talked about, Marlon Brando, James Dean, Marilyn Monroe, so many people. They took the teachings and they took the manual from Stanislavski, craft of acting to be the art of experiencing from the Russian Stanislavski. Isn't it crazy that I'm talking about Moscow, Moscow, our theater. And then without wanting to even talk about it, every time that I see this guy that's all over the news right now, the suspect in the Idaho the alleged, alleged murderer, the suspect in the killing of the four beautiful souls, the college students. And you see this guy within the last couple of days and the situation took place in Moscow. I didn't even know they have Russian names as cities in the United States. At first, when I heard about it, but I wasn't really paying attention because I'm not really paying attention to crime. I mean, I do, but I don't talk about it because I'm not an expert. For the last couple of days, I've been watching it. It's all over the internet. It's all over the news. And I've seen some of the experts come out and talk about this guy, Brian Christopher. His middle name is Christopher, but nobody goes by his middle name. Everybody calls him Brian and the last name, which right now I can't think about. And I'm wondering how much does a name have to do with how we turn out to be? I don't know. I think just being called by his first name and the family name, leaving out the middle name, there's something to it. I don't know what it is to it, but every time I hear them say his first name and last name, I'm thinking, if you put in the middle name, I don't know, does that take away from his 
creepiness that I felt the first time that I saw images of him when he was brought into court in Pennsylvania before he was transported to Idaho. Every time I see an image of him, I'm like, oh my God, there's this creepy feeling that I have. It so scares the hell out of me. And I know there's innocence until proven guilty. I know his lawyer is saying that he cannot wait for his client to be exonerated. What I was going to say, I'm losing my thought right now. I was going to say that I was watching this and I couldn't help but hear these many experts talk about how in their expertise as psychologists, understanding of crimes and criminology, and I don't know exactly the terms that you associate with them, they were talking about him as if he were a character which was really crazy to me because I never really thought about that. Maybe I did generally, but I never really allowed my mind to listen to it in a specific way. So they were talking about how in the classes of criminology or criminal justice, they reenact scenes of all these serial killers in the analysis of the cases. So they are reenacting just as actors reenact in action without just the theory to be able to find the clues and to be able to find the in-depth findings of who these people are and how it is possible for human beings to get to that point where they allegedly and some in the past already found guilty to be able to commit such horrific act reenactment i mean just the way this guy the suspect in the idaho killings was walking in shackles i was looking at him having heard all the experts talk about how they also pay attention to the way that he is walking to the way that he is behaving and I was saying to myself what would it be like to just pay a little bit more attention and imagine that he was a character not to take away from what he did let's just imagine a character that would come close that I can think of with somebody who is a brilliant actor and what movie I could think about and if you go back I don't know how many years when this movie came out the one with Christian Bale in American Psycho which was such a brutal film to watch I remember having seen it once I haven't watched it in a long time but now having all this happening and having all these people online on the internet try to analyze and try to figure out How is somebody with this guy's background, schooling and education, who at first looks like a normal person, is able to commit such acts? Where does that reside in us as humans? Going back to Christian Bale, I know that he's a method actor from the interviews over his long career. I think he's one of the most brilliant actors. I don't know if he actually says he's a method actor, but you can see in his take on of the roles that he's portrayed, there's no way that he's distancing himself from the characters to say, I don't want to drop into those situations the characters I'm portraying are going through so I was thinking there was this one video clip of him from American Cycle there was a scene where he has another character in his apartment and I think it was played by Jared Leto and the character has the back to him and he is portraying himself to be this normal human being he talks a lot about the music that he likes he talks really really fast while at the same time he's got a smile on his face he's putting this plastic coat on as he's getting ready 
to take the life of this other character played by Jared Leto. The way that he was able to come to that character was not in a way that would creep us out from the beginning. It wasn't in the way that he was portraying a human being as a killer from the beginning. Because what's so shocking about these people, and especially the suspect, we're all watching all over the news now, is they look like normal human beings. That's what's so scary about the whole situation because they don't look like somebody that you can see at first glance and you can protect yourself from them because they are revealing to us in their way of being to be killers. They're looking like normal human beings who are then able, allegedly in this case, to do what he is accused of doing. That scene that I'm talking about of Christian Bale, while he puts the plastic coat on, it's so scary because you know the smile that he's got on his face and him talking about music. If he was not putting on the coat, that behavior would be a normal behavior. It would be all of us talking about something that we're passionate about, you know, with a smile, with joy about what we're talking to another person about. The putting of the coat, the plastic coat, meaning that he's about to get ready to do something that's going to be horrific, grabbing the axe in that scene is so freaking scary because there's the contradiction to here's this good looking guy talking normally about his passion of music and at the same time he's going to grab an axe so he's not going oh I'm coming out as a killer in the scene and I'm going to talk about my music have you heard this music this is the best song have you heard Phil Collins he doesn't do that he comes on he is so subtle in his behavior he presents himself as a normal human being and then boom it changes when he grabs the axe, then there's an improvisation. I knew that was an improvisation scene. Even before I listened to somebody saying that was an improvisation scene. And I knew it. I was like looking at him and I'm like, oh my God, that was such in the moment work of the actor Christian Bale. When he does this, he does this dance where he's talking about the music and it's almost like he's remembering a video that had to do with the music and he does this dance I said that's got to be in the moment there was something that he allowed himself to come up with because he was not judging the character to be a killer he was analyzing the character himself the actor to be a normal human being who is capable of doing horrific unforgettable, unforgiven act. That's what makes great acting. Great acting, going back to what the Moscow Art Theater was able to bring to the audiences of uh, the United States and New York under the direction of Konstantin Stanislavski, they were able to understand that human behavior is very specific. Human behavior is not general one way of portraying a character. We have so many different layers to our behavior and to who we are as people. When a great actor portrays a character and the unexpected is let out, that will make great acting rather than bad acting, which would be portrayal of, I'm a killer, I'm going to kill. I'm a nice person, I'm going to smile. No, we have so many facades. We have so many facets. We have the facade also, which he does, Christian Bale in American Psycho, he has the facade where he works on Wall Street. He seems like this charismatic, wonderful character. He takes that facade off and we see glimpses into the portrayal of what it's like for him to be the killer character. Those glimpses only allow to come out rarely it makes the audience be scared. The audiences are scared of the unknown he's letting us become witness to for just glimpses throughout the film. 
And the rest of the time, he is this amazing, with a lot of friends, ambitious human being, character. I was just watching these images of this guy, of the suspect, watching him tall and to see his outer appearances at first, which gives us so much into then to be able to go into the inner part of the character, watching him in handcuffs, shackles on his feet and his hands and the way that he's walking like a robot. It just brought me back to that dance. I don't know, it's my mind is working like that because my imaginary part of the brain with the other part of the brain seem to come together at some moments that I don't even want them to come together, but I can't help it. So he was walking and he was walking like a robot, the suspect, the real suspect. And then I couldn't help but think of Christian Bear doing the dance that I was talking to you guys about. Ugh. Even as I'm doing it right now, that's what I'm talking about when I say great actors experience, they live in the moments in comparison to theoretic understanding only of the characters and remain at that theory in the way that you portray the character. If you are doing this, the way that I'm doing it, reenact this of what Christian Bale was doing, I can feel this vibration through my whole body of this feeling of, Ooh, terror I can feel these tingles going through my legs and my arms and my back which is so crazy even now I feel it if I were just sitting in this chair and all I did was just talk about it I wouldn't have that experience I wouldn't have that feeling through my body. The difference between great actors and bad actors is the great actor's experience. It doesn't mean that Christian Bale is going to go and experience what it is like to do such an act. There's a misunderstanding of method. Those people who don't understand the method and those people who do not think that method is sane for actors to do are the ones who don't understand what method acting is. Christian Bale never goes to put himself in a situation to experience what it's like to do such a horrific crime. Of course, he's not going to do that. But he is going to allow himself to use himself in ways that will reveal that sadistic part we all have in a small way. It doesn't mean that you have to go and commit something. It doesn't mean that if you play a drug addict as a character, you, the actor, have to go and take drugs. No, you can find some other situations in your life that will inform you what that would be like. You can use the take of the alcohol if you're a drinker and you can try to recreate what it was like when you have an emotional recall of a personal event in your life where the drinking was more than what you usually drink. You can take that use of the substance of alcohol to allow that to inform so it doesn't mean that as a method actor, you have to put yourself in those situations as some of the misinformed people seem to think method acting is. That's not what it is. It's not that. It's about using parallel events and allowing your imagination and allowing your analysis, doing research. And all of those together will reveal what great actors such as Christian Bale was able to reveal in that dance. He was smart enough to know that rather than go to a descriptive one way of behavior into a criminal character, which any other bad actor would have done, if I were to suggest the same improvisation with a bad actor, let's just say, if a bad actor doesn't understand the technique of acting and what it requires, he would automatically say, because he would be so narrow-minded in the way that he would allow himself to explore a character, and he would say, why would the criminal, why would a killer do a dance? 
because he doesn't understand that the criminal character that you are portraying is going to have so many different sides to himself. It's not just going to be the criminal who doesn't dance. The criminal is going to be portrayed in one note, which is the superficial way of portraying a character, which is bad acting. A character means you allow your exploration to be on who that character is by going into the humanity, the humanity of the characters, which is so scary in the case of portraying characters such as criminals, killers, is that they are so normal when you first take a look at them. They look like the rest of us. We don't recognize them among ourselves. We think they are normal human beings. Then they will reveal in moments glimpses into that scary part of ourselves. They cannot control, but we can control. It's so crazy to see how true crime has so many similarities to how they do the recreation of the scenes, how they focus on case analysis. It is so much about the details of what the place is, is about the details of the past of that criminal, of that killer. It's about the relationships with other people, psychology and behavior to try to come up with why, why would anyone and now this guy allegedly do something so horrific, destroy the lives of those four wonderful souls and destroy the lives of so many people associated with them, the whole nation. Why are we so fascinated with these cases? Why is true crime the most watched of all? Why are there so many actors now buying the rights to real cases and do them as fictional series? So many of them. It's because people are so fascinated and because people are so fascinating. We will never come to understand our humanity. There's always going to be somebody that's going to surprise us. Scenarios that are going to horrify us, that will shock us. Even though there's a manual that Stanislavski came up with for actors on how to better understand psychology and transform it into behavior with the use of the tools that he gives the actors, there's never going to be a manual that's going to give us the perfect analysis in behavior. That's going to be the final way that we will understand human beings. It's a mystery. We're a mystery to ourselves. We're a mystery to others. I think I'm just being so overwhelmed by everything that's going on. There's so much happening. I just needed to kind of say all the things that I said and get it out there because that's what I was feeling when I was watching the latest on the news. I don't know. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much.